Hey everybody, welcome back. I would like to talk today a little bit about uh, things that I grew up with when it came to professional wrestling that just really mean a lot to me even to this day. And I want to show you a little bit of my collection. I can't bring them all in here because there's quite a few obviously. But those who grew up with them, you remember these. This is the more rare Shawn Michaels. Uh, the one where he went uh, into singles competition. He had the the red and the, the white tights versus the rockers. And then there's also the one where he's in the uh, black and gray tights, I believe. And this is the Mountie. These were manufactured by Hasbro. And to me, even though they were not articulated other than like the weird little actions and stuff like that I absolutely love the Hasbro line they are a lot of fun to collect they look really cool some of them are really hard to come by such as Billy and Bart of the Smoking Guns the 123 Kid Heel Crush uh, Yokozuna Yoko in uh, the white and the black uh, tights also, I believe Kona Crush. Um, i trying to think of some other ones. Uh, not really rare, but I have to say another one would be hard to come by would be Ted DiBiase without the tuxedo. Uh, the singles version of Marty Jannetty. Um, believe it or not, Nails is, appar is apparently a hard one to find. That was news to me because I found him probably about six or seven years ago for five dollars on eBay uh, who knew that that would become more of a difficult one to, to come by as you can see here I have my world heavyweight uh, replica got it all shined up here I'm not really sure how good the camera picks it up but I also have my own personalized nameplate I have uh, four replica titles. I have this one right here, the World Heavyweight title, the United States title, the Oval WWF uh, Scratch Logo Intercontinental title, and I also have the Big Eagle uh, from the Attitude Era. These are, I wouldn't say they're the top of my prized possessions when it comes to my wrestling collection, but they're definitely some of my favorite. I mean, anybody that owns a replica knows that it's just really cool to have uh, you know, obviously, you know, I didn't win this, <laughs> but for those who, you know, have the, the funds and the ability to, to pick up one of these, you know, be my guest. I mean, these things are really cool. They're, they're very collectible. They're a lot of fun. Uh, I've, I've wore this one with different costumes over the years, even with the Comic-Con, stuff like that. And let, let me ask you, uh, viewers out there. Uh, I noticed I get some more views on certain one videos that I've done than others. Um, please leave comments down below if there's something that you'd like for me to talk about. Or if there's something that uh, you want me to go back and reiterate on something that I may have missed. Um, this is a channel about wrestling, video games, anything vintage. Um, there's a reason why they call me Dr. Nick. And it's not because I have a degree... Uh, it's because of the fact that I am an expert when it comes to the field of professional wrestling collectibles, professional wrestling history, uh, video games, all different kinds of stuff. So, uh, in other words, I wouldn't say I'm the most knowledgeable, but I do know quite a bit. And that's why I, want, I decided a long time ago to do this channel and do these videos and stuff like that. Uh, check out my, my good friend. Uh, his YouTube channel is The Horror Reel. A uh, really good buddy of mine. Uh, really big into horror movies. Uh, movies in general. Check out his videos. This month is his favorite month, of course, because Halloween is coming up next Saturday. So what, what kind of costumes are you guys going to do? Um, I thought about doing uh, Ric Flair, maybe. Uh, CM Punk. Uh, you know, something wrestling related. I don't know. I don't even know if I'm going to go to a costume party or anything. Probably not. I'll probably just hang out at home and watch some Halloween Havocs on uh, the network, which, as you know, is for $9.99. <laughs> Anyways, um, 
What can I really say about today's merchandise when it comes to figures and stuff like that? Uh, here's an example of, you know, you have the uh, Jack's Classics, and this is uh, diesel, which those who collect figures know that the Mattel diesel is more harder to come by and more expensive. And th this is one of my favorites. Um, I like this. This is kind of cool. This is Vince McMahon as the announcer from the 80s. He's got the, the gray suit and the old logo. This was before he was revealed as being the owner of the company. He was just an announcer and a commentator. And then, of course, you know, you have the more advanced, the Mattel, uh, you know, this is Michael Cole. He's got the little microphone there. I always thought that was kind of cool that they made a Michael Cole. Uh, unfortunately, I could not get the build a figure because it cost a crap ton. So I bought the Michael Cole uh, head and put it on a suited body I got from uh, Spare Triple H. And then you have these, which I'm not really sure why in the hell they made these. I mean, they're kind of cool. I've picked them up here and there. This is Billy Gunn, and these are called Maximum Sweat. As you can tell here, you know, it's just ridiculously done. And then there's a little button on the back here. You press, you fill it with water, and it's supposed to... You press it, and it's supposed to come out with beads of sweat. It's kind of gross, if you ask me. But, I mean, if you've watched my other videos, uh, I mean, look at all the different stuff I have. I have figures, um, brawling buddies, more figures, play sets, pictures, autographs. I mean, just... All kinds of cool shit. Um, to me, wrestling is one of those things where it's it's a happy place. It's a place that I, I uh, go to and enjoy. I mean, this is this is my man cave, and I go here to um, you know look at my toys and my collectibles. And uh, yes, I do play with them. You know, guilty as charged. But uh, you know, some of those people out there may, you know, have a main cave with uh, baseball merchandise in it, you know, collectibles, or My Little Pony, if you're a brony, or Hello Kitty, or whatever the hell you're into, it doesn't really matter. As long as you enjoy it, it makes you happy, it's all that matters. So, let's get into what's going on uh, with the upcoming pay-per-view tomorrow, Hell in a Cell. What's going to go on with Undertaker and Brock Lesnar? As much as I want to say that Taker is going to win, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, it's kind of give or take. I don't really know if what's going to happen in this match. Uh, Brock could win. It doesn't really benefit either guy uh, due to the fact that... I don't know. I don't know if this match should, should have even taken place. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know. Uh, I mean, I'm a big fan of Taker. I always have been. Uh, the character itself has always been a huge draw. Brock Lesnar is a huge draw no matter what match he's in, who he's with. Uh, I thought the match between him and Big Show at Madison Square Garden was awesome too. So, then you have the United States Championship Open Challenge. Obviously, Cena's going to lose the title due to the fact that him taking time off. Then you have Charlotte defending the uh, Divas Championship. You have the, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of something, and of course you have Seth Rollins versus Kane, um, the Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt. I don't know, I don't know, I want to say that Dean Ambrose is going to answer uh, the open challenge. I think he would be a good United States champion again. I'm excited for Hell in a Cell, even regardless the Rawls haven't been 100% stellar. And that's okay. I, I'm cool with that. I mean, even in, back in the Attitude Era, Rawls weren't 100% good. Let's admit that. They weren't always the best 100% throughout the show. There, weren't, there were some really good moments. There was some times where you kind of wanted to go up and fix yourself a, yourself a sandwich. Or go take a crap, for all I know. But, uh... All I could say is, is pay-per-views, to me, will always be something that I will always look forward to. For when I first got them on cable, I would always get this little, it was like a little box, little round tube that you would hook into the back of a TV every time you wanted to get a pay-per-view. You'd have to go down there, pay the, you know, 50, 39 dollars or something like that, 
And then for WrestleMania, it was ridiculous. It was like 50 or 60 bucks. And then we used to get it on direct TV, stuff like that. And now with the network, you pay $9.99 a month. You get the network on your, your gaming device or your uh, TV or whatever you got uh, that you can download the WWE uh, network uh, application. Um, I would have to say that my best guess, I think somebody will return uh, at Hell in a Cell. I'm not really sure who. Um, I just I just have that feeling. I'm not really sure why. But uh, anyways, um, what what are you guys watching out there on the network lately? I've been watching a lot of uh, the Table for Threes. Um, I've been watching a lot of the old WCW pay-per-views. Um, of course, the Attitude Era Rawls, uh, some documentaries on there, stuff like that. I love the network. $9.99 a month is well worth it for all the content that they have on there. And of course, I have a huge collection of wrestling DVDs to keep me busy as well. So let's just say I have quite a few hours worth of wrestling footage to, to get me through. But uh, anyways out there, uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, like this video. Um, there's a link below to uh, the Facebook page. It's uh, called Slamcast, which Slamcast is on uh, fnx.network, fnxnetwork.com. Um, it's a site that has all different kinds of podcasts and, and all kinds of great content. I myself do a, a podcast on there called Slamcast. Uh, tell your friends about this channel. Um, like I said, please subscribe. Leave comments down below, and uh, remember, it's a great day to be a wrestling fan.